Test taking strategy is very big, very important subject. Really important, you're gonna be taking a lot of tests over your career here. And so we wanna make sure you understand how to do it well, all right? Today, we're gonna to talk about a few things. I'm starting with point number zero, because <laughs> it comes before everything else. Before we talk about any kind of tips or any kind of strategies for how to take a test, I wanna make sure you understand what it means to take a test. So we're kinda of gonna go back and understand like, sort of philosophically, what are we doing when we take a test? Next, we're gonna talk about way before test day, what do you wanna be doing? Study skills, we'll talk briefly about that. Then number two, we're gonna talk about right before test day, what do you wanna focus on, okay? Then number three, during test day, what are some of the tips and strategies and techniques you wanna be using? Then also during test day, how do I deal with anxiety? If I feel anxious, if I feel uncertain, what I do with that. Finally, this is very important. After test day, you don't just go home and celebrate and you know be like, all right, that was tough, and never touch it again. That's not the right approach. We'll talk about what is the right approach when we get to that point. Everybody with me? You all good? Okay. So the first thing is, what does it mean to take a test? So what it ought to be is a measure of progress. Progress means there's a, there's a continuous stream, right? So there's a continuous effort that you're putting forward. And it's just gonna measure what you know right at that one point in time. So it is a measure of what you know about a specific subject, okay, at a specific point in time. So that point in time is very, very important. It's not a representation of who you are or how smart or talented you are or a measure of who you are as a person. And that's where a lot of the anxiety comes into play. People get worried because they feel like, okay, my whole being is wrapped up in how well or how poorly I do on this test. That's not true. If you feel that way, I totally get it, I understand. But you need to transform your thinking so that you're thinking more of it as a measure of progress. It's a measure of where I am right now. What do I know right now? All right? So one thing you've got to be aware of, how many of y'all are freshmen versus sophomores, juniors, seniors? Sophomores. Okay, good. So mostly sophomores. It's important to note that before in high school, for example, you may have even been taught by some teachers to sort of, they would teach to the test, right? So you had a test and they would kind of guide you to only learn the material necessary for the test, especially things like EOG testing, end of grade testing, that sort of stuff. Even SAT testing, where they would drive towards a specific point or a specific kind of test. You probably now know, after having been through a year at WSSU, that college can be different and it gets even more so as you go up to sophomore, junior, senior, where you're doing these kinds of things required to recall information, oftentimes without the use of notes. You're asked to summarize things. Give me the big picture. Let me understand the big picture view. What does it all mean? That means understanding all the details and bringing them up so that you can make a big statement about what's happening in aggregate. It can also do the reverse. It can make you go deeper and get into all those details and so you've got to be able to do either or. When they give you some details, you have to understand what the bigger picture is. And when they give you a big picture topic, you've got to have the ability to drill down into the details of that topic. Does that make sense? And so they're requiring you to do that as a college student. A lot of times they're also asking you to express your own ideas and your own thinking. Much more so than in high school. Maybe they did some of that in like English composition, that type of thing. Hi, welcome. Hi. Uh, you're in test taking strategies? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Maybe they did that, maybe in English composition. But a lot of your high school courses did not really require you to think your own thoughts and put them on paper and explain your ideas that came out of your own mind. We're asking you to do a lot more of that here at WSSU. All right? So these are the kinds of things that taking a test embodies, right? That's what it can consider. Finally, I've written down here, applying and making connections. You're asked a lot more at WSSU 
to utilize what you learn in another setting or in another chapter of your textbook or another subject matter underneath the subject you're studying. So there's a lot more of that back and forth, making connections, being able to apply what you learn. So that is another thing that taking a test is going to be required of you. All right, now that we've talked a little bit about that, I want to go on to our next topic, which is long before test day. What do you do much, much, much before the date of your test? Does anybody have a test that's coming up soon? Anyone have a test that's coming up soon? Probably most of you, right? So what I'm saying is even before you got to this point, at the beginning of the semester even, what should you have been doing? We're going to talk a little bit about that. Definitely you need to manage your time. Definitely you need to learn how to study well. For example, finding a quiet environment to work in. Um, having no distractions. Turning off your phone. Creating a system in your day to where you allocate time specifically for studying and nothing else. This is called time blocking. A lot of those things I talk about in my workshop that's called Study Skills. And this is a very uh, much a summary of a couple of these uh, things right here. So for Study Skills, some of the things we talk about are your environment, how to prioritize your time, chopping up your tasks into smaller things, how to do the time blocking, which is what I briefly talked about, um, some examples of how to use a timer, how to do flashcards well, what it means to work in a team, and how you can use your professor to help you in your studies. These are just like the major, big, big topics that we talk about in there. And they're actually available for you to watch right now. You just need to go to wssu.edu slash success workshops, and there's a link there to previously recorded workshops. And you can go in and you can see my beautiful face again for another hour <laughs> and enjoy the content there. But I guarantee you, it will be time well spent. The other thing that we've got on there is something called time management. And that's where you see this summary right here, which is the, excuse me, the stay focused, be smart, seek optimism, find purpose. These are some of the key things we talk about in time management. So I want you to definitely consider watching one or both of those. That is going to lead you to the things you should be doing well before your testing, right? Proper study skills, proper time management, too big of a topic to talk about today but I've already got two workshops built in for you that you can watch anytime you like. All right? Does that sound like something you might be interested in seeing? Anybody want to learn about how to study better? Anybody want to learn how to manage your time better, right? These are good things, right? You all agree? Now it's up to you to make the time to do that. Okay. So now we'll talk about why those things are important. Because studying is cyclical, not linear, right? Linear means a line. Cyclical means a circle, right? It even sounds the same. Studying is cyclical. You have to go through this whole process of absorbing those ideas in class, recording it well, doing good note taking, building it back up to reviewing and applying all those things that you just learned, then back into preparing for the next section or the next uh, workshop or the next class you take. <coughs> Excuse me. And then it cycles back in, absorbing new ideas, taking good notes, applying those notes, using those notes to then prepare for the future session, and it keeps on going around. It's a cyclical process. It's a circle. Hey, Mr. Harris. And that's why it's so critical that this time management, that this study skills is going to work for you. Because you cannot treat it as, okay, I'm just going to study right now for this test, and then I'm done. That's not how it works. It's a process that you should be going through all the time. And the workshops teach you how to do that. All right? Again, long before test day, I've got a three-part thing here, which is talk to the man plus scan plus plan. So when you talk to the man, that means go talk to your professor. It could be a man or a woman. But you're going to talk to your professor, the person in charge, and find out more about what that test is going to be. And you could do that even as early as the first day of class, right? They're talking about midterms, they're talking about final exams. You can already be saying, can you give me some guiding points on what this is going to be about? That's talking to the man. You're going to find out the structure, the scope, the content, the duration. These are the key pieces. 
Meaning, is it going to be multiple choice? Is it going to be essay? What's the scope? How many chapters are we covering? Are we covering things like lab experiments? Are we only covering textbook materials? Are we only covering the books or novels we read? Or are we going to cover other things in class that are not in the novels, for example, for an English class? Lots of different possibilities. It's up to you to talk to the man or the woman and figure out what is going to be on this test, right? A lot of students are afraid to talk to their professors, but I guarantee you, if you talk to them, they will help you. I mean, they want you to succeed. They're not there to make you fail. They want you to succeed. And so you shouldn't be shy, you shouldn't be timid. Go up and talk to your professor. Get the inside scoop. It's going to help you enormously. Has anybody done that? Has anybody talked to a professor about a test or a quiz coming up? What was your experience like? Uh, my experience is actually really, you know, um, with the other one, and it could be, you know, just making sure that you do what they were told to just email them, like, um, you know, just to make sure, like, in my mind. So he was very helpful, right? Great. Yeah, that's a great example. So you can see right there, through experience, it does work, okay? So, you talk to the man. Now you scan. Now, this is assuming that you're doing your work properly, right? You're reading the assignments, you're, you're reviewing the material from classes, you're doing what you're supposed to do. Then you can scan your materials before test day and figure out, have a strategy. What am I going to be making sure I really know well? What has the professor told me I should know really well, right? So, he or she may be guiding you towards certain things. And that will help you because then you spend less time doing not important things and more time doing important things, right? In your study plan, this is the plan part, you want to include some makeup practice tests. When I say makeup practice tests, that means made up by you or made up by your group that you're working with if you're in a study group. These kinds of questions that you develop together or on your own are going to be very, very important because they're going to help you to prepare for the actual test. Now, you might ask, well, I'm not sure if I know enough to design a test myself. That's probably true. But just the process of trying to do that is gonna make you better. It's gonna make you a better student. Because you're gonna ask the critical questions, which is, what would I test if I were the teacher? What would I make sure my students knew from this chapter or from this section? So by doing that, you're going to try to figure out what's the most important thing to know. And that is a very, very good process to go through. You can even design, of course, very simple, right? Design very simple questions to ask so that you can answer to the best of your ability. Remember how I talked about summarizing and drilling down into the details? You can do that with your question creation too. You can ask a very broad question like in chemistry, what is mitosis? Then you can practice answering all of the drill down details that go into that. Or you can ask a specific question like, what is the, uh, I'm making this up, right? What is, the, uh, uh, what is the function of the mitochondria in this kind of a process, in cell recreation, okay? So you can ask a very specific detailed question and then allow yourself to answer it and then go draw it. In the process of this bigger picture, here's where it plays out. So again, play with that when you design your questions. All right, everybody on board with that? Understand what we're talking about so far? Okay. Let's jump to our next section. Now we're gonna talk about before testing. So this is you know just a little bit before your test. What do you think are some of the things you should do right before your test day? What, what should you be doing? What are your thoughts? Sleeping. Sleeping well? Good. What else? I'm sorry? Okay, revisiting the stuff you need to study. All right, good. What about you? What do you think? Eating. Eating properly? Okay. Good. I have a slide up here that probably gives you some hints, right? Healthy lifestyle. Yes, that art is part of it. And one of the biggest things is no cramming. You don't want to cram, meaning try to stuff your mind full of things that you didn't know before at the very last minute. That's how I would define cramming. That's not healthy. That's not healthy for your body. 
because you're treating your body wrong, because you're spending hours and hours trying to get stuff in there that should have been done months before, and you're not treating your mind right either. It's also probably going to increase your anxiety. You're going to feel a little bit more fear and worry and doubt because you're trying to stuff everything into your brain at the last minute. Instead, you should be studying to learn over time, right? So we talked about long before test day. And some of the things I like to say are recap, recall, restate. It's all the re words. When we use re words, of course, what we mean is we've already done this, right? We're just going to redo it. So yes, you want to study the most important stuff, definitely. But it shouldn't be like the second time you've seen it, right? It should be like the fourth time you've seen it or the fifth time, right? Because you are recalling and recapping. You are not seeing it for the first time. Make sense? So you have to have done all that pre-work so that when it comes time to study, all you have to do is recap, restate, revisit, recall everything. It's already there, I just gotta remind, remind myself of what it is, okay? So that idea of re-repeating, that's what you wanna be doing right before testing. Some of the other things are treat yourself right, meaning get plenty of sleep, eat well, don't eat unhealthily the day before, try to eat an exercise if you can, because it will just give you more energy. You can even study while you're exercising. This is actually a thing where when you're doing an exercise and you also study, you're learning how to remember and recall information in different environments. Not just, okay, I'm in O'Kelly Library, I'm sitting at the desk I love, that I always sit at, and I'm studying it in this way, and it's a certain time of day that I like to study, and I'm only good when I'm in O'Kelly Library, in that chair, at whatever, 11 a.m. before lunch. That's just my sweet spot. You gotta get out of your sweet spot and be able to recall you know, information, be able to restate, recap, in different environments. So if you go for a walk or something, or you go for a job or something like that, and you just practice recalling information, that's going to allow you to expand your comfort level, being able to recall information in a test environment that is not at O'Kelly in your favorite spot at 11 a.m. Make sense? And then attitude. This is the last one on this slide because attitude is very important. You have to make sure that you are just trying to do your best. If you are so fixated on being perfect or you feel so much pressure that you, oh man, so much is riding on me doing well on this midterm, it's worth 30% of my grade. If I screw this up, like these are negative thoughts, right? You need to have the attitude that I'm just gonna do my best, try my best, and that should be good enough. It's just a point in time. I got other points in time in the future I can also prove that I know the material. This is just one of those points in time. All right, let's go to during test day. So we're kind of going chronologically, right? We did long before test day, we did right before test day. Now we're gonna talk about during test day. What are some of the tips? Here we go. Again, I'm gonna use that scan and plan technique. When I actually get the test in my hands, I'm gonna scan through it, take a quick look. It doesn't hurt you to spend 30 seconds to a minute just to see what's in the test, right? That can sometimes help your mind calm down, right? Anxiety, you can calm down by saying, okay, now I know what's on the test. I know what I'll probably do well. I know what I'm gonna have difficulty with right off the bat. I already know that. And then I can plan. Now that I've scanned through and I know generally what this test is gonna cover, I can create a game plan as to what I'm gonna target first, what I'm going to target second, you know, what's going to be harder for me versus easier. The third bullet says data dump. And this is a technique that you can use if you want. Some people like to study and memorize all the important stuff, especially things like we have to memorize formulas, mathematics, chemistry, but it can work for anything. History, you may have key dates and times of things that have happened. You data dump right at the beginning. So once they say, all right, turn over your papers and begin, you just write down all the key things that you tried to store in your head that you're worried you're going to forget, right? So you write down the key formulas you're supposed to know for that test in math, for example. Or you write down key ideas in history or key dates. 
um, and uh, things that you know you need to get right. Or in biology, chemistry, right, you have certain processes or um, even visual diagrams. You, you start drawing it out and writing down all the little parts. So you make sure you remember, for example, the way the heart works. You draw the heart, you draw all the parts, the arteries, all that stuff. You quickly data dump, you get it from here onto the page, so then you're good to go. You don't have to worry about, oh gosh, I don't know, uh, I don't remember, um, what it was that thing about the heart? Oh man, I knew it right when I walked in the door, and now I've forgotten it 30 minutes later, because now you ask me all the other questions. Data dump it first. Get it on the page. Remember to wait till your professor says start. You don't want to be looking like you're cheating. Once they say start your test, then you data dump, get down all that stuff you do not want to forget, then you can scan and play. Make sense? Is that something anybody ever tried? It's probably a new technique for most of you. So you may want to try that. It, it's actually very effective. A couple of other things. You want to always read the instructions carefully. The worst thing you can do is answer the wrong question or answer it without the proper understanding of what they're asking. Answer the easy ones first. Build your, build your confidence, right? We talk about anxiety. I'm already talking about how you can deal with anxiety. Do the ones that you feel like you're going to do best first. That's going to create some momentum, make you feel good about yourself, make you feel like, okay, I can achieve. I can do well on this test. Don't rush. Occasionally, you want to check for accuracy, make sure you're on the right number, especially if you're doing like a Scantron or a multiple choice type of question. You don't want to be answering question 11 when actually the question is number 9 or number 10, right? That's the worst thing. So always double check, make sure you're on the right path. Believe me, you have enough time. It takes literally just a few seconds. You think, oh, I don't have time to waste to do that. It just takes a few seconds, just make sure you're on the right path. And then different question types are going to require a different approach to answering that question type. We're going to get into more detail in just a second. So different question types. The biggest one being essay writing versus multiple choice or uh, even open-ended answers, right? This is the big divide. I want to talk a little bit about each of them and how to have some tips on how to do better for that. First, let's talk about essays. So for essays, A, the first thing you need to know is is there partial credit versus only getting full or no credit? Right? Is it like zero and one? Or is it going to be like, okay, this is worth 20 points, and just based on how well you answer it, I'm going to give you a certain number of those points? Because typically essays are going to be partial credit, right? They're going to give you some credit for how well you write. And that's important to know. Just make sure that that's true. And then you can go ahead and answer to the best of your ability. Secondly, B, what verb is used when they ask you that question on the test? This is really, really important. When they use the words like analyze or um, critique or discuss, that's one thing. But when they ask you to like compare or contrast, that's something totally different. So make sure you know the verb that's being used when they ask you the question on the test. Don't answer a question by comparing and contrasting things when they, in fact, asked you to illustrate something. To illustrate means what? I'm sorry? To draw? Yeah, it could mean to draw. Yes, definitely. It could also mean to like give an example, which is up here on the board. So illustrate means show me, prove to me. Give me some evidence. Show me some examples. Even draw out a diagram to show me why this is true. That's really different from compare or contrast, which would be there are two ideas. And contrast specifically means how are they different. All right? So then you're talking about, I don't want to talk about just how they're similar. That would not be answering the question. If they say contrast them, I have to be talking about how these two different approaches to the same thing are different. All right? So each of those verbs is asking something a little bit different. Make sure you understand what the question is when you're doing essay questions. Any questions about this, this um, slide? 
Y'all feel good about this? Okay. So now let's jump into multiple choice. What are some tips and techniques for multiple choice? First of all is that whole idea of process, eliminate, process of elimination, which is a very good thing to do, right? Has anybody heard of that, process of elimination? Who's heard of that? Everybody, right? Everybody knows it. But how do you actually do it? Do you all know how to actually use process of elimination? Can you tell me what are, what are your techniques? Um, for my process of elimination, then first I read the um, questions first to know what I'm looking for. And then after that, I All right, so you do restate it. You restate the question sort of in your own words, yeah? Okay, good. How about yourself? What do you do? I just read the question, then I go to the answers, and basically I go through and just say, you know, what well, this one is definitely not going to be right. Like, it's not good. Just the obvious answers that you know are wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you get rid of the obvious wrong ones. Good, good. Do you have any other ideas? No, I do the same thing. Okay. Good, so what are some of those obvious wrong answers? We're going to talk about that right now. Sometimes, when you eliminate wrong answers, those wrong answers can be extreme answers. Right? Things that are really, really extreme. Sometimes they use the word never or always because those are very extreme comments. So if you have a question that says, this is never the case, or this is always going to happen this way, you do have to start to question whether that might be a wrong answer choice. Not always, I'm not saying it's always wrong, but many times it can lean towards being wrong because it's such an extreme way of saying it, right? Another thing to look out for is an answer choice being outside of the scope of what you're talking about. Again, right, we're talking, if we're talking about, um, you know, the Civil War, for example, then outside of the scope would be where they're talking about another kind of war. Right? Or they're talking about something else that is unrelated to that. So you have to look at things that are outside of the scope of what you're talking about. Or if you're talking about mitochondria, anything not related to mitochondria, even though it was in those chapters of the test, is not going to be right, because it's not related to mitochondria. Make sense? Then the opposite answer choice. This is a real good one, because sometimes professors will try to trick you by putting an answer choice that is the opposite of the right answer. So if the right answer, um, you know, is, uh, I don't know, something like, um, you know, that, uh, I can't think of a good example right off the top of my head, but you know what I mean, right? If, if the answer choice is something that is going to be, um, you know, one particular way, they're going to take it and make it the opposite of that, because it feels like an attractive answer. Uh, it feels like it might be right because it sounds similar, but it sounds similar because it's actually the complete opposite of what you need it to be, if that makes sense. Okay, like if the answer is, yeah, this is the largest body of water in the world, again, I'm making it up, the wrong answer choice would be, this is the smallest body of water in the world. And that's kind of a silly <coughs> example, but you get my drift, right? In the context of your classes, you can kind of imagine that something that is the opposite of what you're looking for might be attractive to choosing because it is very like it, but just in the opposite way. Okay? So be careful of that. Irrelevant is also a good one, right? It's something that's off topic. Sometimes that's the obvious stuff. You can sometimes eliminate those because it's real obvious. Okay, this is way outside of it. But what about the times when it is related? This is where your study skills come into play. Because when it's related, but different, that's going to really test how well you know your material. And that's where most of those hard questions come up. Where it's all related, but it's not the thing that you're looking for. And that's obviously going to rely on your good study skills to get those questions right. Alright. Now, other things that you want to know for multiple choice. Here's a couple of really good things. You want to be very aggressive and pessimistic of your answer choices. That means you're going to feel like every answer choice is potentially wrong. And when you have that attitude, when you have that approach, 
then you're going to be very critical. You're going to analyze every answer choice with a critical eye. And that's what you've got to do. You've got to prepare to eat, attack each answer choice. All right? And it's good to be a little bit skeptical, right? Pessimistic. You, you kind of think, well, it's probably wrong. I'm going to attack this and try to knock it off. That allows you to cross off wrong answer choices. In a multiple choice question, that is the equivalent of making progress. When you cross off a wrong answer choice, you have eliminated one of the hopefully the wrong answers, and that way you're progressing towards having a greater chance of getting it right. You can always guess when you need to, right? You can always take a guess when you're left with two or three answer choices you're really not sure about. You can guess, but your probability is much better if you've eliminated one or two or three. So far so good? Everyone follow? Questions? All right. Now we'll get into anxiety, because I know this is a big topic. Does anybody deal with anxiety when it comes to test A? Anybody feel a little anxious going to take the test? Yeah, a little bit? Yeah. OK. So we'll talk about what that means now. How do I deal with anxiety? First, let me just figure out, do I have anxiety? This is one of those things where you go down this list of seven things and kind of figure out if you're hitting on three or four of them. Yes, you probably deal with anxiety. And you can read these on the slide here. The first one is not sleeping well the night before an exam. Number two is my appetite changes uh, the day of the exam. Number three, I suffer some mental blocks when I'm actually in the exam. Number four, I sometimes feel panicky or, or I sweat when I'm taking my test. Number five, I'm usually in a bad mood after taking a test. Number six, I usually score lower on exams um, than on papers, assignments, and projects. Meaning when I don't have that, that pressure of being in a room and having to do something for a certain amount of time, I do a lot better, like the papers, assignments, and projects. But when you put me in a room, when you put a sheet of paper in front of me and tell me I have 50 minutes, that's when I do less well. Okay, that's how you know you may have some anxiety. And finally, after an exam, I can remember things that I could not recall during the actual exam itself. That's going to be an indicator that you have some anxiety. All right. What do you do about it? How do you overcome it? My first strategy is to be prepared. I know that sounds silly, right? Of course you want to be prepared. Of course you want to have good study skills. But I'll tell you why it's important. Because when you do those good things, when you have good time management, when you study effectively, you're going to find that being prepared reduces your anxiety. You feel like you've done everything you can to be successful, so now you just go out and execute, all right? Number two, the practice tests. I talked about it earlier, it's very important. You want to start developing practice tests on your own so that when it comes to test day, you're less anxious because you've already tested yourself, so to speak. You've already gone through the idea of taking a test. It may not have been the test that the professor has prepared for you, but it is a practice test that you or your study group has designed so that you can almost prepare for the real thing. So doing that is going to help you reduce your anxiety and feel like, OK, deep breath. I've done this before. I've taken this similar kind of test because we created it a week ago or two weeks ago, and we practiced using it. So I already know that how to handle questions I've never seen before because my group you know, designed some things I never wrote, and I had to answer those questions, that was helpful. Make sense? All right. The third one is choose positive thoughts. You've got to feel good about yourself before you can do well on a test. All right? If you're constantly having these negative thoughts, oh man, I'm going to screw this up, oh this is, going to, this is going to be bad, man, I hope I get out of here with better than an F, you know, if you have all those negative thoughts, you're just going to bring yourself down. You've got to think positive, as hard as that is to do. Think of happy thoughts. Think of good things. Speak those words out loud if you need to. Like go to the bathroom, speak it out loud, look in the mirror, tell yourself good, positive things. I'm going to do fine. This is going to work out well. I have enough time. You know, all those positive words you want to put out there. 
All right? That's positive thoughts. Number four is have a plan. Remember how we want to talk to the man and, uh, and, and also make a plan? So this is making a plan. If you have a plan, if you go to the scan and plan, you're going to have a plan in place. If you don't scan and plan, if you don't scan the test beforehand, like when you're given the test, if you don't scan it right away and check, you will not have a plan. You will just do question one. And then when you're done with question one, however long that took, you're going to do question two. And when you're finished with two, you're going to go to question three. But you don't really know what's coming, do you? That's a little bit scary. That's a little bit anxiety producing. So if you scan and have a plan, you'll probably be less anxious. Because you already know, okay, man, number five, that's a killer. That's going to be really hard. I probably won't do well, but six I feel good about. Seven, we'll see. I have some ideas. I'm going to jot down, jot down some notes. So you've got a plan in place, right? Makes you much less like, much less of that feeling of, I have no idea what's coming next, right? Anybody feel that way? You got no idea what's coming next. That scares the heck out of me as you're taking the test. If you scan and plan, that anxiety goes away. Serve yourself. All right, you got to serve yourself by sleeping well, eating well, um, relaxing, trying not to get tense with your body. Um, and finally, V, visualize. You want to visualize success. You want to visualize yourself achieving or doing well. Of course, the opposite is true. You do not want to visualize yourself doing poorly or coming out badly. Again, keep it positive. Then arrive early. Make sure you're there early. You know where you're going. You get settled in. You got your papers all ready. You got your pencils or whatever you're going to be using. Your, your calculator. Everything is set and organized. You've gone to the bathroom. You've got, you're all ready to go. Finally is perspective. Remember what we talked about before. What is the purpose of taking a test? It should not be a reflection of you. It's a reflection of a point in time on a specific subject over the course of a long experience with that subject. So you've got to treat that test as such. It is not life or death. The final thing I want to talk about, so stay with me, we're almost done. Final thing is after test day. What do we do after test day? And after test day, the real critical thing, I'll put it in one short sentence. Figure out what you should have known versus what you thought you should have known. Compare the two, figure out the difference, and do better next time. That's it. And that's what's here on this board. You can see that there was content that you thought the test would cover, but it didn't actually cover it, did it? So how did I go wrong? What did I do, or what did I not do, to fail in that regard, right? To not do as well as I could have. And that's where you're going to work on it. You're going to say, what did I get wrong? Why did I get it wrong? And how do I have to adjust? Did I talk to the professor beforehand? Did I find out what the composition of the test was going to be? Or was it a different kind of problem that I encountered? Um, am I having trouble actually understanding the material? That's very different than I didn't talk to the professor, so I didn't know it was going to be 100% essays. Or I didn't look at the syllabus, and I should have. Right? These are all things that have a different fix. So figure out what the problem was, and then find the solution for it. Let me give you a couple more examples. These are really good because they're very, very specific. You can see what I'm saying and how it, how it can work for you. So very specifically, these are a couple of things. Number one, preparation. Oh, I ran out of time. Oh, I thought I knew the right answer, but I didn't. What is the corrective action? You need to develop those practice tests. You need to work on your study skills to get stronger in that area. That's what it's going to indicate to you. What if my problem was I didn't read the directions carefully? Or I got confused about certain terms or certain concepts. I didn't quite get them right. Now we're talking about attention to detail. Now we're talking about possibly rushing. We're talking about maybe you're allocating your time. Maybe you didn't scan and plan. Or maybe the plan piece of your scan and plan was not as good as it could have been. right? Maybe you should have done the easier stuff first, and you didn't do that, because you could have gotten full points for all the easy stuff. But instead, you spent a lot of time on the hard stuff, 
You didn't even have time to finish the stuff that you knew, right? You don't want to do that. How about content? What if it was about, I didn't understand what was wanted, I was confused, I didn't know how to answer. Okay, now we're talking about, you probably need to join a study group. You need to get some deeper understanding of the material. You probably need to get tutoring. Come to Hill Hall. You know, second floor has, uh, third floor has a writing center. Second floor has, a not an open area, but that's more for the ASCs, but the first floor actually does have like the quantitative center and also general tutoring. So first and third floors are where you want to hit. Third floor for writing and communication, first floor for quantitative and really just any subject matter type tutoring. You can also seek office hours. Go to the professor, go to the teaching assistant. Talk to them during office hours and really spend that extra time to understand the material better. Finally, there could be a mechanics problem. Maybe I didn't erase a wrong answer choice or did that several times. Maybe I forgot to redo a question that I skipped earlier. That's a problem. What do I need to do? What do I need to change after test day? I need to slow down. I need to be calm. I need to be precise. I need to be poised. So those are things where I need to calm down. The anxiety needs to go down. And you can use the things I talked about to reduce your anxiety. So those are the tips and techniques for after test day. Are there any questions about after test day? So let me recap, talking about the re, let me recap what our workshop was today. First of all, we talked about what does it mean to take a test. And it was all about having good perspective, knowing that it's a moment in time. Second, we talked about long before test day, how to do good study skills. It's about managing your time. It's about the cyclical process, not the linear process of learning. We talked about before test day. Don't cram. Serve yourself right. right. Sleep, eat, and visualize well. Relax. Those are all things you need to do. During test day, our tips were to scan and plan. Scan the test, plan it out. And then we had specific ideas for essays, for multiple choice, how to address each of those differently. Finally, during test day, we talked about anxiety. How do you want to deal with anxiety? How do you choose positivity? What are some of those methods for making me feel a little bit less anxious? We talked about those. And then after test day, you do need to learn from your mistakes. It's the only way you're going to get better, is by taking what you know about how you maybe did, didn't do as well as you could have, and changing it, turning it around to learn what you need to do better moving forward. That is a method of learning, not just learning the content of the subject, but that's learning how you test take, and learning how to test take better over time. It's not just about that one class. It's about being a better test taker for all of the other courses you take at WSSU. Right? So it's very important. Don't think of it as, you know, this little thing. It affects everything else you do going forward. So it's worth doing for every one of your classes. So with that, I hope you enjoyed this session. Did you guys like it? Was it worth coming to? Yes, very. Okay, great. Remember, we have 20, over 20 other sessions going on this semester. Obviously, many of them are done now. But we have several more coming up. I want to say at least four or five, even next week. Go so check out our website, wssu.edu slash successworkshops, and you can just check those out and then just RSVP by shooting me an email, and then I'll know that you're coming. Also, don't forget, live recorded sessions like I talked about earlier. They're on that website as well. You just go there, you click on previously recorded workshops, jump in, you know, sign in with your banner ID number, and you can access that right away. Time management, study skills, note taking, um, emotional intelligence, GRE test prep. We have so many things on there. Over 40 different sessions are already, excuse me, over 30 different sessions are already recorded and available to you. So go check it out. There, I'm sure there's some jewels in there, some gems that you didn't know was available to you, and it is available to you. So with that, I just ask for a few more minutes of your time. If you wouldn't mind just completing this short survey, just three minutes, just go ahead and zap the QR code and fill it out right now before you forget. Um, if you need to, I can email it to you as well if you're not able to get on your phone and do it now. But it seems to work out really well when we do it right away. So. 
If you all could just go ahead and do that now, we'll get it done. So with that, thank you very much. Again, I'm James Powell. Thank you for coming for our um, test-taking strategies.